Good morning, friends who are joining us virtually. What a blessing it is to have you to join us in this wonderful opportunity for worship. We have shared together our prayer concerns and our celebrations. And if you have those that you want us to see, please add those in as you join us today. We wanted you to be sure that you could join us for this moment when we begin with our special music today. And then to join us for the sermon. Bear with us as we're continuing to move into this new day of worship together, but also trying to include you virtually. Blessings to you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, by the way, I'm on the Wells team today. And Betty gave me this, and I'm the 12th pastor, and we're celebrating one more year. So we give thanks for that.
Amen and amen. You never know what will break out at Wells. A little liturgical dance and uh, whatever may happen. It's all great. We are so blessed to be able to be back and to share life. Um, and to be a place where everyone is very welcome. And we are so grateful that we are full of diversity. Of age, of race, of all sorts of spectrum. And we give thanks to God in the celebration of that. Well, today, um, um, we're continuing in our journey with the kings. And as I began to do my studying and preparation for all this, uh, I felt it would not be um, uh, good to just pass over um, the first king that was here. We talked about Samuel last week and how... God had set Samuel aside. His mother Hannah was childless. When she had a child and prayed for that, she committed Samuel to be a Nazarite, to be a servant of God all of his life. God honored that. He lived with the priest Eli. He heard God's voice calling him. And uh, and, and, and Samuel, in the middle of the night, said, Speak, for your servant listens. Last week, as we were journeying together in worship, many of you know that uh, the power was out, and the only thing that kept coming to my mind during that first 30 minutes that we were gathered together was, okay, Lord, I'm like Samuel, speak for your servant listens. I don't know what you're trying to say right now or do right now, but speak. And Samuel listened intently, even though it was a hard, hard word that Samuel was given, he listened. And God was able to use Samuel because Samuel remained faithful and obedient. He became a judge and ruled over Israel, but he also was the one who was looked to as the prophet and the leader of the people. And Samuel is the one the people came to, as we ended our passage last week, to be the one to help designate a king on behalf of Israel. And we went through this whole wonderful journey in chapter 8 last week of 1 Samuel, uh, where where Samuel spoke to God about this and God spoke to Samuel about this and basically said the people don't know what they're asking for. They really don't want a king. (laughs) And they're really not betraying Samuel, your leadership. They're really denying me, God said. And so there was great warnings given to the people about having a king and going that direction And the concern that their loyalty would get wrapped up in a human being instead of in God. And so we're in that journey um, as it's going to unfold. And today uh, we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapters 9 through chapters 15. So you may remain seated as I, I'm not going to read all of that by the way. Uh, But if you're looking for the context in the text, there's a warning I should give you. Uh, Some of this, chapters 9 through 15, is very graphic and very pointed. (laughs) There's a lot of battles and a lot of things that take place in there that that make us cringe at times to think about. But it's a recording of what was happening in their day and how the children of Israel continued to live into this journey with God and how God continued to live into that journey with the Israelites. So we left it with Israel asking for a king. And today we enter in when Samuel is given insight into who that king should be. And so I'm going to read some selected verses from chapter 9 and a couple of verses from chapter 10 of 1 Samuel today to to share this with us. And so it says this, When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Then Saul approached Samuel inside the gate and said, Tell me, please, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the shrine, for today you shall eat with me, And in the morning I will let you go and will tell you all that is on your mind. As for the donkeys that you were lost three days ago, give no further thought to them, for they have been found. And on whom is all Israel's desire fixed, if not on you and all your ancestral house? 
Saul answered, I am only a Benjamite from the least of the tribes of Israel, and my family is the humblest of the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Why then have you spoken to me in this way? As they were going down to the outskirts of the town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the boy to go on before us, and when he has passed on, stop here yourself for a while, that I may make known to you. Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him. He said, The Lord has anointed you ruler over his people Israel. You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you shall save them from the hand of their enemies all around. Now this shall be the sign to you that the Lord has anointed you ruler over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzah. They will say to you, the donkeys that you went to seek are found. And now your father has stopped worrying about them and is worrying about you saying, what shall I do about my son? Well, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stories of the people of faith are important. And to see the stories unfold. I'll be honest with you. There are parts of the scripture I would just as soon pass over. And this is one of them. And so when I was preparing again this week, I said, okay, Lord, what were you really up to when you told me this is what I needed to do for this week? And to share in it. It's an interesting story, however. <clears throat> and there's no way of journeying into this story with the kings and to celebrate the one that comes after this one without first going through the journey of what happened with Saul. Saul... <coughs> Excuse me. Saul was minding his own business. Y'all hear me? Saul was minding his own business. His daddy's donkeys got lost. And Saul was out looking for his daddy's donkeys. And the next thing Saul knows is that he is with this prophet, this seer, this man of God, Samuel, who's telling him, he will lead all of Israel and be king. Have you ever been in a place where you were minding your own business and God stepped in to ask you to do something outside of your character? Sometimes we give Saul a bad rap, I think. Because I just want, that's the first thing I noticed about Saul. Man was just looking after his daddy's donkeys. And all of a sudden now, He's called to lead Israel and specifically to lead them against the Philistines who were controlling the land and causing havoc against God's people. The interesting thing is in this story, several. We know about Samuel. We know about his ability to be in tune with God and what God's plan for life is. And we see here this man named Saul. Saul ventures and meet Samuel, and, and God says to Samuel, this is the one. Why Saul was chosen, I'm not sure. What we catch later is that when they're coming together to do the formal coronation of the king, and to pull together the, the official anointing, that, Sam, that Saul is hiding, not really wanting to be a part of this, but he comes from Benjamites, one of the smaller tribes, Kind of unknown folks. And that God has raised him up. What we do know about Saul is that he was handsome. The scripture goes to great lengths to tell us that. And as he stood up among his people, he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. He's that kid that everybody thought ought to be playing basketball or doing something, I guess. You know, Anybody know about that? Cameron, you have been asked if you need to play basketball because you're like seven foot tall already. You'll be. Saul was handsome. He stood head and shoulders above everything else. It's the epitome of what you would think a king should look like, maybe. And maybe it's what the people expected because when he was introduced and got taken out of the baggage and brought back where he was hiding... And placed before the people. And Samuel said, behold your king. Everybody thought, yes, that's the one. 
but it didn't last long. <laughs> As they journeyed on, Saul did fill into that role, and in his first commitment to battle and winning that, the people then came on board and continued to proclaim him as king. But it didn't take long for Saul to want to take things into his own hands. And Saul denied the guidance of God. And it came to a place in all of the battles and all of the goriness and all of the scenes that unfold in these chapters. It came to the place where Saul decided to take the place of Samuel the priest and to take the place of the priests who were anointed to do so and to become the leader in the spiritual realm himself, which was not his call or his gift or his blessing. It became so outright that he disobeyed God. He outright disobeyed and then denied he had disobeyed God. And because of that, his kingdom didn't last very long. I tell you, it's a tough story. A person who had this just thrown upon them, who had no idea what they were doing, that all of a sudden tried to live into that and to take control of that, but made some mistakes and then wound up no longer having the blessing or the charisma. On the ability to be the king. It wasn't long till Samuel gave up on him. And it wasn't long until God started looking for a new king, which, by the way, was the very opposite of Saul. And we'll get to that soon enough. Um, but this one makes me struggle. This one makes me struggle. Because you would think that if God had suggested this is the one, that God would ride with them no matter what. It makes me struggle because sometimes in the life we live, we have this understanding that God orchestrates everything in life. And here it seems that God is not orchestrating. That yes, he approved of Saul as king, but yet it didn't turn out like the people wanted. Now, God had warned them of that in the beginning. So where's God in the midst of that? God's there, but God doesn't pull Saul out of it. He allows Saul the choice in life. And it's tough. It's tough for Saul. It becomes even tougher later when he starts having dreams and becomes so consumed with himself that he's really no good for anybody. And yet God, God doesn't paint this great picture. And throughout Scripture, we don't always have this picture where everything turns out just right. And yet God is there. It seems that the challenge is because of obedience and disobedience. And that's a hard, hard concept. As to whether we truly follow what God leads, or if we go part way, or where do we wind up. I'll tell you, this one's a hard one for me. Because I want a God who orchestrates everything and that everything turns out great and everything's happy <laughs> and everybody's on board. And sometimes it just don't happen. Some of us have experienced that, haven't we? <laughs> and we wonder where God is and how God is and what God will do next. For the children of Israel, God continued to journey. He continued to make a way. He continued to be present. And I feel that in this moment there, even in his disobedience, God welcomed Saul back into his presence 
And you'll find in about chapter 15 where Samuel, though he's disassociating himself with Saul, goes with him to be with God one more time and to offer sacrifice with him on his behalf. I wish God intervened like I want God to intervene. But sometimes... God just lets things happen. Not that God is not with us. And not that God will not carry us through. But sometimes life is real. And life is tough. God seeks our faithfulness. God seeks our total trust even in the midst of times that are hard. And God seeks our obedience. But God allows us choice. And we walk in that. Again, how I struggle. But how it's real. God is with us. There is more to the story. And God even, I believe, continued to walk with Saul and to give him strength even in the midst of his craziness and down the journey. God is with us. Maybe not like we want God to be there, but God is with us. I don't know what else to say except that God continued to journey with his people until it finally became evident that God had to relate in a new way. And so he sent his very presence in Jesus Christ to come so that God could be, he could be with us in relationship with each of us as we journey with God and as we seek to be God's people. Don't fall out on me at this part of the story. <laughs> but stay with me. Because God's presence continues to come and give strength and give life. It's a hard word to say amen to today. But amen, amen. and amen. And we pray that God will continue to journey with us. Well... If you're going to really take these stories of faith to heart, <laughs> and if you're really going to look at them, you have to take the hard ones too. But know that in the midst of that, it is a story of how people related to God and how God relates to people. And that God will continue the journey. It doesn't end with Saul. It continues on as we journey together. Well... We remember that even though sometimes God didn't seem presence, He continued to show up. And He continued to be there for those who would seek Him. And He continued until He offered Himself in the presence of Jesus Christ. And He offered Himself to us in a way back to restore new life. And it came not through a king and it came not through some following obedience to rules. It came because of grace. And it became because of God's love for us. And it came because God is present always with us. And so we gather around God's table, even though we're sitting in our pews. And we gather together knowing that Jesus promised to be with us. And on the night he gave himself up for us, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he blessed it. He said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood and new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Because of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
that we are able to come to his table and to receive God's presence. So, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Through your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Body and blood of Christ given for you. Eat and drink in remembrance. Even though Saul struggled, it's a reminder to us that God is still with us. No matter where your struggles take you today, or how you got there, or what caused those struggles, I promise you that the God that we know and love continues to walk with us. Sometimes God lets us live in our own choices, but God is with us and will be with us. Wow, I, that was a downer. <laughs> and yet there's hope. And yet there is hope. And yet there is freedom. And yet there is God who walks with us. Hang on. <laughs> it gets better. But we have to take the journey. Amen? Amen. Stand. We're going to sing something. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. 393. Sing it with me as we share it. some parts of the Bible I just don't like, <laughs> but yet, it's that journey, and we continue on. May God restore you. <laughs> May God bring you out of the consequences of choice. May God offer you hope and life and love, and may you walk with God choosing to be in his presence. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.